Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how to create a login system using Flask and MongoDB as the backend. So by login system I simply mean you can log in and then your session will be active. Um, you can register to create a new user and that's pretty much it. I don't want to get too deep in it in this video but I think those two things are the main things that you want in a login system anyway. So what I have already are the imports that I'll need to actually write all the code in this video. I have uh, the database set up here already and I have a secret key ready for when I use the session object. I also have these templates up here. Uh, these are just to make the login form and the registration form look a little better. So the first thing I need to do is I'll create the index and the index is going to do one of two things. It is either going to return uh, some information about the user. In this case, I'll say something simple like uh, the user is logged in. And if the user isn't logged in, so there's no active session, it's going to return the login form. So first, uh, I'm going to check if there's a username in the session object. So if username in session, uh, I'll return something like you are logged in as, and then whatever the username is in the session. And then if this is false, then nothing returns. I'll simply return uh, the index, which holds the login form. So let me start the server. And we can see if the login form is there. So server started. I'll refresh. And there's no route called login. Um, when the template goes to render it's looking for the URL for login because I have that in here somewhere uh, where is it so login and register so I'll just create a couple of routes for this that don't actually do anything yet so login return just blank and the same thing for register okay so now I'll save and server restarts. I'll refresh. And here's my login form. And it has a link to the registration page and it has um, the button to take you to the login page. And it doesn't do anything because the post method's not allowed on the login, but I'll get to that in a moment. The first thing I want to do though is work on the register page, which is blank, but it won't be blank for long. So the very first thing I need to do with register is make sure that it accepts both uh, get and post requests. So uh, post and get will be in the methods. And then it's going to do one of two things depending on which method. So if it's a post method, it will allow the user to register. And if it's a get method, it simply returns the uh, registration template. So I'll handle the the post method first. So I'll use the request object that I imported up here, right? Request method post. If it is a post, let me move this return down a little bit. If it's a post, I want to first determine if the username that they're requesting to register with already exists in the database because I don't want duplicate usernames. So, um, my database is completely empty at the moment. There are no collections, but when there are collections, uh, I'll be able to check to see if a username already exists. And if it does, I'll return that message to the user. If it doesn't, I'll let them go ahead and register. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to uh, get my Mongo database. So I'm going to have a collection called users to uh, store all the username and passwords. So to get that, I just do mongo.db.users. So the users is a collection. And I'll assign this to a variable called users. Once I have users, I will then search it. So users.find1. And I'm looking for a name where the name is the same as what the uh, user passed in the form. So it's going to be the request.form uh, username, I believe. And I can check this in the template. So the register template and the name is username, yes. So it's going to pass the username from the form and it's going to look for it in the database. 
and if it finds it then users um, well this should be assigned to a variable so uh, I'll call this existing user so if it finds the username in the database it's going to return an error message and if it doesn't find the user in the database then it will allow you to continue so if it finds nothing then existing user will be empty it will be none so I'll say if existing user is none then I'll go ahead and let the user register. So to do this, I'll hash the password that the user passed in first. So um, let's say hash pass is going to be, and I'll use bcrypt to hash the password. And bcrypt is just a way to um, kind of more securely hash passwords. It makes it difficult to crack um, an arbitrary password because um, there's so many combinations and bcrypt kind of slows down the algorithm so it takes longer to generate a password which means it takes longer to crack a password so I'll hash the password there's no um, quotes there I'm gonna take the the form value for a password so what is the name of the value It's just pass so pass and then I'll generate a salt for it, so bcrypt.gen salt, I believe. It may be lowercase s, but I'll see in a moment. So once I generate the salt, um, I can then insert everything that I need to insert for the user. So I'll do um, users.insert, and I'm going to insert a JSON object with a name and a password. The name is going to be the username that was passed in. So I'll copy this. And the password is going to be uh, the hash password from bcrypt. So I'm not storing the plain text password, I'm storing the hash version of it. And when I go to log in, I'll um, compare the hash of the login username with the login hash that's stored in the database. And then I'll know whether to let the user in or not. So I'll insert um, the name and the password and then once I do, I can return the user to the index. Well, actually, there's one more thing I want to do. I actually want to create the session. So I'll do session username, and it's going to equal um, the username in the form, since I'm now logged in. And I'll return uh, just a read at, redirect to the index, so URL for index. And then if this fails, then I can say um, that username already exists, which means that this wasn't none. Uh, this should be else. Well, no. If um, if this is none, then it returns, and this is never reached. If it isn't none, then this uh, is reached, and then it returns that username. And then finally. If the post is not true, then it's a git. And if it's a git, that means I can return the page for um, the registration template. So return uh, render template register.html. So let's see if this works. I'll save this, make sure the server is running. It is, so I'll refresh the register page. And I get an error, let's see what the error is. Uh, no error, it just took a while. So I'll register, um, I'll use my name, Anthony, my password will be password, and I'll register. Let's see if there are any errors. Uh, it has no attribute gin salt, okay, so it must be lowercase. I can quickly do that. But we see it didn't find a user, so it made it into this if block. So I'll refresh this and it's a conflict form resolution, uh, don't care. And then it needs to be encoded before hashing, so let me encode that. So encode UTF-8. Okay, now let me, nope, I don't want to resubmit. Okay, so I'll try this again, Anthony, password, and I'll register. And it's telling me global name password is not defined. So, yep. 
just minor errors. This should be a key. So I'll save. You do it again. Anthony password. Okay, so now it says I'm logged in as Anthony, which is exactly what I want to see because I created this session here, which then gets picked up by the index route because I was redirected to the index. So the username actually exists in the session. So it's rendering, um, or it's not rendering this template, it's rendering you are logged in as that. And if I look in the database, if I refresh this and look at the database, I have this collection and I have um, one document. There's a name here, Anthony, and I have this password, which is the hash that I created. So that's the registration part. The login part is similar. So let me uh, destroy my session. Let me open up developer tools. And let's see, resources, session storage. I think it's a cookie, actually. Uh, I need to open it on this page. So cookies, yeah, uh, I'll clear this. So there are no cookies, my session is expired. Okay, so if I go here, just to uh, demonstrate, this is the registration page again. If I use my name again for um, a username, it already exists in the database. So when I go to register, it tells me that the username already exists. So let me go back to the index where the login form exists. And I'll handle the case uh, with the login. So uh, login here is going to be a post. And there should be brackets around this. So basically, uh, the login template posts to the login route. So there's no git for the login route, it will just process it. And if it's uh, successful, it will redirect to the index and I'll be able to see the logged in as whatever the username is. So I'll move this return down. Well, actually, I'll just get rid of it. And uh, the very first thing I need to do is get the uh, collection for the database. So just like down here, um, users is going to be mongo.db.users. And once I have the users, I can find the uh, login name. So uh, users.find1. And I'm looking for where the name is equal to request.form username. And let me just make sure, yep, username and pass. So it has the same form names as the registration template. So it's looking for a user, but in this case, it should find it if the user is entering valid login information. It should find it, and I'm finding it so I can compare the passwords. So once I found the, uh, the user, I should do if, or I need to give this a name, um, login user. So if login user is none, or no, how about not none? So if the login user exists, I actually don't need all this. I can just say if login user. So if login user exists, I will then compare the passwords. So um, I'll do bcrypt.hash password, and then I'll take the password in the form. So request form pass, and I'll need to encode it so I don't get that same error. And then, so this takes two parameters, this hash password, uh, when you're trying to compare passwords. It takes the password that the user entered, and it takes the, uh, the existing password that's in the database. So login user password, and it is password, right? Yes. So the password for the login user. And then it compares it to um simply the the password again in the database so login user uh, password and I believe I need to encode both of these so encode utf8 and I'll do the same over here 
this is a long line, but I'll leave it like this. UTF-8, okay. So now if this exists, I can add the user to the session. So session username equals request form username. And then I can return the redirect for the index. That doesn't work, I could say invalid username password combination because the um, username and password failed. And then I can say um, invalid username here. You know, just to make it a little more secure, how about this? So the user doesn't know if it's um, a failed password or a failed username. So if the login user exists, it checks the passwords. And um, if the passwords are the same, then it adds it to the session and it returns the index or it returns a redirect for the index. So it sends them back here. Um, if either the password is wrong or the login user doesn't exist, then it simply returns uh, invalid username password combination. So let's see if this works. So let me make sure the server is working and it failed on something. Okay, but now it's running again. I can close this. I'll refresh the page here and I'll log in with my username. So Anthony and then password. And I didn't spell that correctly. So log in. It takes a moment to hash the password, which is good in this case. And it says that I'm logged in as Anthony. So let me clear the session again and refresh and I'll put in uh, just bad information and see what happens. Invalid username password combination. So this is exactly what I want out of my login system. It's very basic, but it works. And um, using a Mongo database as the backend for this makes it really easy. You can see there's barely any uh, database code in here. I basically just get the user once and then I can easily do everything else. Whereas if I had a different kind of database, like an, an SQL database, there might be a little more database set up. Um, but here there's not much. That's one of the advantages of using the Mongo database. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, you saw how I could easily create a login system and it didn't take too long to do. Um, there were a few errors along the way, but for the most part, it went pretty well. So if you have any questions about this video or creating a login system in general, uh, just leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you in the next video.